We are going to be taking a look at the Odroid Cloud Shell 2. Right now, it's just a box. I'm going to set it down, and we're going to take a look. So what we're going to do tonight is we're going to actually assemble this thing, put it together for you. And what's included in my box of the Cloud Shell 2 is the Odroid XU4Q. You see this? This is a SBC. I'm going to call it the Raspberry Pi Killer here tonight, folks. And the Q in the name stands for quiet. And that's that huge heat sink that you see there that is gonna keep this thing cool without a fan. Why is it a Raspberry Pi killer? Well, you see the circuits. Uh, it's basically compatible as far as the form factor goes, but we've got gigabit ethernet, 4K video output, and more. We're gonna talk all about that. Now, in the Cloud Shell case, uh, we've got a whole bunch of stuff. There's a USB 3 uh, component ca uh, cable. We've got the ribbon cable, a bunch of screws. Uh, we've got, let's see, the, this is really nice. The front panel includes a 2.8 inch uh, TFT color screen, but it also has a back plane built right into it. Look at that, SATA, and that is for two SATA hard drives. So that's going to give us uh, RAID controller or JBOD or whatever we want to do. That's all built in. We've got a power cable, I've got the American uh, kind of 110, then we've got the 92 millimeter fan to cool it, and a 15 volt 4 amp power brick. Then we've got a couple of little mounting uh, little pieces. As you can see, we're going to show you all about what that does. And the EMMC hard drive. It's basically a replacement for the SD card that you would put in uh, in your Raspberry Pi. There's our battery for the battery backup for the uh, real-time clock and then the components themselves for the case. Now, you'll notice that they have a little bit of a cloudy finish and that's because each of these components have a protective film on it. Now, you may not see it and you may not be able to really easily uh, get to it, but if you get your nail under there, you're going to see that you can peel that right back. And we need to do both sides of each of these pieces of plastic. So uh, that's just there to protect it during uh, manufacture and during um, shipping itself but make sure now if it is not crystal clear uh, then you know that that has some film on it so uh, once that's done they're going to be perfectly clean clear and not going to have that cloudy look to them whatsoever so now we just have to kind of figure out where to plug everything in um, but i want to do this with a kingston ssd if i can so let's give it a go i'm just going to put it on this mounting bracket to make it the uh, same size as a 3.5 mil uh, 3.5 inch hard drive and then i should be able to mount it to the side brackets here so set everything up and just a couple of screws on each side should do it uh, but we need to make sure that it's lined up right now i've noticed that i've actually got it mounted the wrong way around here Jeff so I Whoops. need to actually turn that over <laughs> pay attention Robbie okay there we go lined up to the back plane just fine that's better I can put that back together through the magic of TV we can speed this up for you so it's not uh, a full hour <laughs> <laughs> there we go now all I have to do is just plug in the back plane. You'll see that it just kind of snaps onto the back plane there um, because it is just an SATA hard drive, so that carries power and uh, the, the data as well. Uh, but what I'm noticing here with the SSD, uh, in particular with this mounting apparatus, is that it's not lining up. So the problem with that is now I can't line it up to the back plane. That's a problem. So I do have a server here that has some old uh, 500 gig hard drives in it. I'm going to pull those out as we take a really quick commercial break. When we come back, we're going to take that SSD out of there and we're going to instead install physical like spinning hard drives, old okay. school style. All right, so stick around. We'll be right back. You've got mad skills. Now hone them. Learn new skills or improve your existing ones with online video tutorials and training from lynda.com through our special link at cat5.tv slash lynda. Learn software, technology, creative and business skills you can use today to help you achieve your professional goals. Join today and start learning. We'll give you this chance to try it absolutely free with unlimited access to all of the courses. Sign up now for free, cat5.tv slash linda. Welcome back. This is Category 5 Technology TV. Now, tonight, we are building the Odroid Cloud Shell 2 with the XU4 single 
board computer. I'm, I'm calling it the Raspberry Pi killer because oh. it is way more powerful than the Raspberry Pi. So let's fire it back up and we're going to throw these hard drives in that I pulled out of an old uh, server that I've got here. These are just 500 gig Barracudas, so we'll just remove them from the mounting apparatus and just take this SSD out. Now, I do want to do the SSD thing, so in a couple of moments I'm going to show you a bracket that we could use that would allow me to use my SSDs in this system, but you can see that the normal hard drive line up really really well and so we're gonna go that route just for tonight for the sake of time and for the sake of the demonstration so that looks good it's gonna work with this backplane just fine so we'll put these drives in uh, now this particular unit the cloud shell 2 the case it includes the backplane that has raid uh, raid capabilities so uh, by putting two hard drives in here I can set up a mirror I can make it so that these two computer uh, these two hard drives will have an exact image of one another so that if one of the hard drives crashes I still have the data so we should be able just to plug that right in now these ones line up a lot better than that uh, than that SSD with the just kind of the included mounting plate so if we just line that up and give it a little push should be nice and snug there we go okay all right looking good not too tough to put this thing together is it jeff no that was Sweet. simple sasha do you appreciate the ease i'm just going to stick a couple of screws in here to <laughs> just to hold that together that's just for the side of the uh the faceplate itself a little quicker and easier to do it this way than uh, the build that we've had to do so this is the 92 millimeter fan. I'm just gonna mount that here. And one of the things that you're gonna notice, I'm just gonna put in three screws. You're gonna understand that in a couple of minutes time. Uh, but essentially when you're putting the fan on here, we just want three screws. And the other thing that's important is we observe the airflow direction. There's a little arrow here that shows me that it's blowing out the back of the computer. That's important. We wanna draw the hot air out of the chassis and blow it out. Now I can plug it directly into the board, but it did include a, uh, a current limiter here, and that is actually going to slow down the fan, make it quieter, uh, because it has a lower spin speed. So I would recommend that we install that first, uh, and then we're gonna monitor the temperatures and, and see if we need to remove that. It's a nice, easy thing to undo if we need to. Um, with hard drives, spinning hard drives like this, we're gonna generate a lot more heat than we would with an SSD. Uh, so the SSD component, when I upgrade to that is going to run a lot cooler so I'm happy to use that limiter. I may need to remove that with these hard drives. So the Odroid XU4Q is right there. Look at that board. It is just like a, a Raspberry Pi as far as form factor goes and this case just kind of snaps together as you can see um, and there we go. So now we're going to actually um, mount the Odroid itself. But I did notice that I've missed a couple of, uh, of films here, so we do need to make sure that we've got all of those um, removed. Just watch those little components. They kind of got set aside and I missed it. Uh, so now we're just going to put these, uh, these little connectors, these riser connectors onto these little components. And it's a little confusing if you don't have a visual to see, you know, the manual makes it a little difficult to see. So I hope that this helps you um, to be able to mount this. Before I mount it, I noticed that there's an eMMC input, which is going to be my hard drive. So this is a jack for the, the hard drive itself. This replaces an SD card, so it's much more reliable, much faster, and it's going to um, give us a lot of life. So we just kind of snap that on. I would recommend that you do buy that. It's sold separately, but it's going to be more reliable than an SD card for sure, and a lot faster. So now I can mount the board. And keep in mind, it's a little backwards to what you would expect. It actually hangs. The board hangs. So it's not mounting from the bottom. It's mounting from the top of the board. Ooh. So I mentioned that this is the Raspberry Pi killer. It is an eight-core single-board computer, Jeff. Really? Eight cores. It's got two gigabytes of DDR3 RAM. Uh, make sure you keep your maker kit handy, by the way. Um, here, I actually needed to pull a couple of screws because um, there were a couple screws missing. With eight cores, two gigabytes of DDR3 RAM, this thing runs up to 2.0 gigahertz, uh, which makes it more than twice as fast as a Raspberry Pi 3, their latest wow. version. And we know that the Raspberry Pi is not bringing out a new version anytime soon. So this is the next gen. Uh, and definitely, you know, this gets you back on top of the single board computer market. So it just kind of snaps in there and then we need to just apply this ribbon cable which we're going to bend just to uh, make it um, so that it connects the way that we want it to. Uh, I'm going to just fold the cable a little bit here so that it, um, it looks clean and uh, it's not kind of just draped over everything. Uh, we need it to, to be able to reach the board so uh, just 
connect that in. It's like an old IDE cable takes me back. I know. <laughs> So then that's going to go into the uh, the front panel. What that's going to do is it's going to provide power to the circuit board. So we don't need to have separate power for the uh, X, XU4 at all. It also provides the signal to the screen on the front panel. So, uh, and then some other communication as well. So but the screen is actually a color computer screen and every, every bit of the signal goes through this cable. So uh, now the final kind of step here is we need to connect the SATA controller. Uh, but first, um, I need to make sure. Now, you see this little dip switch here? That's going to select between the EMMC and the SD card. I don't want to leave that out. Um, as you can use either or, you can choose which one you want to use. Here is a selector, a dip switch for the RAID controller. I'm going to zoom in a little bit on, on this so that you can see. So this allows me to select RAID 0, RAID 1, SPAN or JBOD, and PM. PM is basically default mode, like normal hard drive mode, so independent drives. That's the mode that I'm going to use, so both switches are going to be off. So then we plug in this USB cable, which is um, actually USB 3. That's another advantage to the Odroid XU4, is that it has USB 3, whereas the Pi has USB 2, and it's very, very slow. This one is very, very fast, and it's... Uh, uh, USB attached or uh, SCSI. So it's very, very fast compared to typical uh, USB connected hard drives. So just simple slide and click. Finish putting this thing together. Look at that. Wow. Now, I mentioned this uh, battery here. This is sold separately, but this makes it so that if you unplug the power from the Odroid, uh, it will remember the time and date. I think that's important. So for the extra couple of dollars that it costs to buy a battery for it, yes. might as well get the RTC battery, a real-time clock, and that just kind of goes in there, and I just push it aside. Uh, and that just helps with that. And that's pretty much all there is to it. So slide the cover on there, and uh, now it's still, you know, nothing's quite locked into place yet but look at that absolutely beautiful uh, now the bottom of this chassis is wide open so check this out underneath we've got a lot of airflow but we need to be mindful of that if you're going to set it on a shelf or something like that you know you're not you need to be mindful that it is wide open on the side is where you plug in the power and again this is a 15 volt power cable and it powers everything you don't need to have separate power for the odroid um, now the final piece is to lock the cover in place with this little guy. This is why I didn't want to have that third, the fourth screw in the, uh, the chassis fan. Because now with that lock in place, screw in that final screw, uh, and that's all there is to it. Now, we're done. Everything's locked. Cool. Good and solid. Beautiful little rig. I love the look of it. Now, you can get one of these at cap5.tv slash cs2 for Cloud Shell 2. Um, of course, you can also pick up the board itself, cat5.tv slash xu4q. You're going to need both of those components in order to put this thing together. Absolutely awesome. Now, a couple of other upgrades that you could get for this if you want, Jeff. I love the fact that it's crystal clear. Yes. yes. Love the love yes. the look of it. So I went and picked myself up a 92 millimeter replacement chassis fan uh, that has built in LED lights. lighting. Yes. Okay. So it's so going to make cool. this thing glow. Really, really cool. One of the things I was disappointed with there is that I couldn't plug in my Kingston SSD. Right. I would like to have this for a couple of reasons. First. Extremely cool, no moving parts. It's not going to generate heat. Two, it's very, very reliable. There are, again, no moving, no moving parts. So if it gets bumped or if it's you know just spinning all the time, 24/7, it's not going to have that wear and tear of a physical right. spinning hard drive. Um, and they're just <laughs> just ultra reliable, ultra fast. And I can set them up in a RAID one. What? Nice. So in order to do that, of course, the included um, chassis mount was not meant for a backplane, not going to do it for you. So I picked up one of these, which um, I'll post a link below in the comments. Uh, actually, I picked up two of these, I should say, oh, okay. for my drives. So what this is, is a little different from the one that's included. And just a simple little upgrade, it looks like the back of a hard drive, right? an SATA hard drive. You slip the SSD in here, oh, and it snaps in. 
there we are, it's done, and now it, it has the exact form factor to spec right. of an SATA hard drive, so now it will fit that backplane. Cool. So my next upgrade is to now switch to these Kingston SSDs. I've got a couple of DC400s, which are really reliable right. uh, enterprise drives, beautiful drives, and that's going in my Odroid case. Nice. It's beautiful. So what can you do with this? What can't you do with it? Well, Plex Media Server? Okay. Gaming? Nice. You want to do some retro gaming on here? Turn this into a retro gaming system? Imagine with eight cores, two gigs of RAM, how much more powerful that's going to be than a Raspberry Pi. Right. You want to build your own network-attached storage device, a NAS? Now, the one thing I am noticing is that there's no peripheral plugins. It's for what? Anything. Like, well, I'm not seeing... Oh, it's on the side. I, yeah, oh, yeah. I didn't even see right that. Right over here. We've got USB, and we've got HDMI 4K output. Totally We've got uh, 10 over 100 over 1,000 Ethernet. There is no built-in Wi-Fi, but you can plug one into the USB. Oh, okay. I would say probably put it <laughs> internally, because there are USB 3 ports inside the, the chassis. Um, so you can put that in there to hide it and not to use up one of your external ports here. See, I was paying attention to the bell. That wasn't even Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then it's the got components. an SD port here uh, for SD cards, micro SD. Uh, and so on. And of course, because Excellent. it's USB, you could always, if you wanted to, grab the USB 3.0 from the inside here mm -hmm. and run a cable out the back or out the side. There are some ports here. Yes. And have it go to a USB 3 hub. And then okay. you've got multiple USB 3 ports that are powered. Right. So you can do all that kind of stuff. It's built to be, I mean, it's a, it's, it's a DIY NAS box. Nice. How do you like that? So if you, and NAS being network attached storage, you can set this up as a new server. A nice economical server for your network, be it business or Very home. Very nice. When I say Plex, that's a media server so that you can watch TV shows on any of your devices. It's like a DIY uh, build your own Netflix server. I love it. And you can just load it. Every your shows day we're on Plex. Beautiful. But Plex through a Raspberry Pi. Now, this is two to three times faster. I know. With better specs, better performance, and real hard drives for storage. Yes. Beautiful. Check that out, cat5.tv slash xu4q for the circuit board, or cat5.tv slash cs2 for the case itself. We've got some other components listed there in the description below. Post your comments, let us know what you think. 